We're going to uh, trace some code that makes use of three classes. A person class that I made up, a student class which extends person, and another class, AP student, that extends student, which of course extends person. So these three classes are related through inheritance and they have a is a relationship amongst them. When AP Joe comes to life with this instantiation uh, code, his default constructor executes. His default constructor in the AP student class sets his AP exam score equal to three. But it's a little known fact that when a, a uh, constructor executes in a class that extends a class, the default constructor of the class that's extended also executes. Therefore, AP Joe's grade is also set equal to nine. And because student extends person, he also has a my age property, which is initialized to zero. So just for the record, when this line of code executes, exam grade is three, and uh, grade is nine, and age is zero. I know I'm using the wrong uh, names there. I don't have room to type out the whole property names, but you get the idea. Okay, when this line of code is executed, we look for a study for exam method that is found in the AP student class. Let's go on the hunt for that. Well, I'll be darned, there it is. There's the study for exam method that's public in the AP student class. This ex code executes, and because his exam score is only a three, uh, it has one added to it. So let's go up here and change this exam grade now to a four and travel on. The next line of code, it prints whatever get AP exam score is. Well, we just noted it's four, so a four displays. Next line of code, is there a two string method in the AP exam, AP student class? Let's go on the hunt for that. AP student class, and there is a two string method. It two strings this phrase and concatenates to that because of the use of the plus symbol. It concatenates to that the number four. So there's uh, the answer that prints out to that line of code. Next, this line of code does the same exact thing as the previous line of code. Because typing out dot to string is optional, when you're in a print ln method, uh, the same thing executes. So we just paste that in as the answer to that uh, line of code. That's what prints out there. Next, say something. Now this is uh, interesting. There are three say something methods. There's one in the person class. There's an overrided version of it in the student class. And most importantly in this case, there's a version in the AP student class. So that of course is what would print out when AP Joe does a dot say something. So far so good. We're analyzing this code just like uh, you would have to on the AP exam and answer a bunch of multiple choice questions based on it. Next, what prints out when we do a get grade? Well, that's pretty easy. I don't even have to look at my code. Uh, nine prints out. I assume that the get grade method is, although let's go look for it. Where is the get grade method? A person that doesn't do well in the AP exam would look for the get grade method in the AP student class, but there isn't one. There's no get grade here. There's no mention of the grade property because it's inherited, you see. It's up here in the student class and its corresponding accessor method, get grade, is there. So because we extend student and because that method is public, everything's good. A nine prints out on that line of code. Next, we call the pass exams method, which is somewhere. I, I found it right here in the student class. So pass exams is legal. My grade does a plus plus. Nothing system out prints or gets returned. So I just make a note that his grade level now changed to a 10 because of that line of code. Next, we print something, get grade again. Well, we print a 10 because we just made grade go to 10. We have a birthday. 
But the birthday method is found down in the person class, or I should say up in the person class. Parents are always written above child classes for good style. And have birthday does a plus plus to my age. So we come up here to reflect that. My age is now one. You know what, this is annoying me. I will type my age up here as the name of that property and my grade as the name of that property and my ex exam grade there. Okay, now I feel better. Last of all, we do a get age, which just trust me, if you scroll down and looked, there is an accessible get age method that's public, so a one prints out. Next, we are going to trace this segment of code that deals with student Jane. Notice, she is a student object, not an AP student object. So can she call the pass exams method? Yes, she can. Oh, before we even do that, we have to make a note of what her uh, properties are. So uh, for my exam grade, it doesn't exist because she isn't an AP student. But she does have a grade level of nine, and she does have a my age of zero, just like AP Joe uh, when he was born, he had those uh, uh, values. When she does a pass exams, we have find that pass exams adds one to her grade level. So we add one to her uh, nine to make it a 10. Then we execute this line of code. Oh, that just looks strange. Never, ever, 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 at least on an AP exam, in a public static void main string args client uh, program or class, never should you see a private property being referenced. It makes it easy when programmers use the prefix my because they stand out like a sore thumb. But even if it didn't have the prefix my, because that is a private property down in a class, which remember in the real world would probably be a different file in your workspace, that's illegal. You just can't do it. Would that be a compile error or would it bomb when the program runs? It would be a squiggly underline compile error that would catch you as soon as you typed it. So uh, it's not too bad, but it's still not good. This is the right way to print out somebody's grade, to call the public accessor method that's available, get grade. So a 10 prints out. Can we get her a AP exam score? No way, because she doesn't have an AP exam score. Another compile error. Eclipse, or any compiler, would squiggly underline that as soon as you typed it. So not much harm done. Here's the interesting one. Say something. We already saw from above that say something is overrided in all three classes. So because student Jane is a student, we execute that version of say something, and therefore I am a student prints out. So I'll paste that right here for that answer. Now moving on to person Mary. Person Mary, she only has an age. She only has an age of zero because she's not a student and she's not an AP student. When we do a set age, because that's a public method, nothing actually happens on the screen, but we do change that zero to a 16. Wow, that was fast. She grew up fast. We do a set grade 10. Illegal. What kind of error would that be, Gavin? Runtime or compile error? Uh, yep. Squiggly underline compile error. On the AP exam, you sometimes do have to know whether something's a compile error or a runtime error. We'll study that next week uh, in more detail. Have birthday. Uh, that's legal. There is a half birthday method in the person class, so her age increments by one. She's now 17 years old. And we move on now to uh, this system out print statement, and we simply print out her age, which is 17. That was pretty easy uh, to analyze, uh, that section of code. Now finally, moving on to the trickiest part of this uh, exercise, person Bob. He is a strange bird. He is deep down, he is instantiated as an AP student. But he's referenced, Minnick calls this cloaking, he's referenced as a person object, as a person reference. In other words, he's deep down he's a student, but he passes himself off as only a person. It's kind of like he plays hooky from school. He does all his work, like online at home. But, so on the street, people think that he's just a plain person. 
but deep down he's a student, he's an AP student. So he has access to all the methods that are on this worksheet, but in a kind of sort of way. Let's continue. When we, uh, when we uh, construct him, he does have an AP exam score of three, just like AP uh, Joe did way up above. He does have an AP exam score of three. He does have a my grade of nine. Even though they're private, and he doesn't have access to them, kind of like the liquor in your parents' liquor cabinet, you have, it's there, but you don't have access to it. Um, and then he has an age. He has an age which is zero. It doesn't really make sense, but it is what it is. Can we call set AP exam score? No. Or, or can we? I, he deep down is an AP student, but he's cloaked or referenced as a person. So that's a compile error. Many students on the AP exam will get this wrong across the country. You will not because you studied this uh, video. That's what cloaking or referencing does. It keeps you from executing methods that are there deep down, but that you are promising that you will not take advantage of because you are dressed up as only a person. You are costumed, you are cloaked as only a person. So you can't use the methods that you do have access to deep down. The next line of code. Now this solves the problem. We are casting person Bob temporarily to the AP student that he really is. So this does change his AP exam score to a five. If you are a rhinoceros and you cast yourself as a canary, you can't call canary methods. It's only if through inheritance that you extend the class that you're trying to cast yourself to, only then can you call those relevant methods. So casting only works in some situations. Um, and in this situation, it worked. Notice the use of parentheses. You must put this extra set of parentheses here to override the order of operations because the dot operator comes before casting in the order of operations in Java. So you have to override that with this extra set of goofy parentheses there. Okay, we're almost finished. Last, uh, second to last. What prints when we do a get age? Well, that's legal. He's a person, and there is a get age method right here in the person class, so there's no problem with that. That prints is zero. And uh, now, this is the trickiest part of this whole worksheet. Say something. For the first question you should ask is, can he call the say something method? Person Bob is cloaked or referenced as a person. So is there a say something method in the person class? There is. Because that method is there, he can call that method. Most new students think, therefore, that I am a person prints out. Because that is the code that's in the class that he is cloaked or referenced as. But it's not. It's not what executes. We just know that he is allowed to do say something. But the version that executes is the version that's in the class that he really is. Deep down, he's a, he is an AP student. Deep down, he is an AP student. So that's why the system out print AP student, I am an AP student, prints out. I guarantee you that out of the 8,000 students or so that take the AP exam in computer science each year, out of 8,000 students, approximately, the question, the multiple choice question that's on the AP exam that is uh, disguised like this, at least 80, 90% of them will get that question wrong. According to statistics that we have available each summer, that's the, the error rate that most students uh, would, would have on that kind of a question. So if you understand that the say something method is executable here, and furthermore, that the version that's in the AP student class that executes, that that's the version that executes, you're in good shape. So there are the final answers to this worksheet uh, right here.